Welcome to this edition of the Native News Update on this Tuesday, December 29th. I'm your host for today's program, Paul Domain. Many of the stories viewed here can also be found at our website at IndianCountryNews.com. Here are the news stories for the day from the Associated Press and other Native News sources. Please join Tony T-Bone Bellamy's family and friends for a celebration of life on Wednesday, December 30th from 2 until 6 p.m. at Bugsy Superior Club at Las Vegas, Nevada. Tony was the lead guitarist of Red Bone. Red Bone's Anthony Bellamy, 69, passed away on Christmas morning, December 25th in Las Vegas, Nevada with his family by his side. Tony Bellamy, who attended the 10th Annual Native American Music Awards and was inducted into the NAMA Hall of Fame with Redbone in 2008, was a Mexican-American and Yaqui native who became the lead guitarist, pianist, and vocalist for the band. Redbone became in an established as a Native American rock group in the 1970s. They reached the top five on the Billboard Hot 100 charts in 1974 with the hit song, Come and Get Your Love. According to Patrick Vasquez, it was Jimi Hendrix who talked the musicians into forming the all Native American rock group, and so they signed an, on as the band Redbone to Epic Records in 1969. The band consisted of Patrick Vasquez, Lolly Vasquez, drummer Pete DePoe, and Anthony Tony uh, Bellamy. Their debut album, Redbone, was released in 1970. Okay. Walk in Beauty is the latest business to be recognized by the Indigenous Chamber of Con uh, Commerce along with owner Jerry Anderson of Red Lake. Anderson, who spent many years growing up in Panema, Minnesota on the Red Lake Reservation and begin, began selling her beadwork in junior high school, has put a team of beaters together that includes the following. Barbara Rosebear, who is Ojibwe from the Red Lake uh, Reservation in northern Minnesota, and Nikki Leone, who is a Cherokee Mete who was raised on the Koala Boundary, Donna Moose from Winnipeg, Ontario, Canada, Christy Anderson from Oklahoma, and Joni and Terry Ann Nelson, their sisters from the Red Lake Ojibwe Reservation in Minnesota. Jerry used to do restoration repair work on museum beaded pieces when she was younger, and uh, she says that walk in beauty isn't just about the two-strap summer sandal look, but that that is the starting point. She intends to create beaded products from boots to pumps, all beaded or beaded highlights. Starting in January, uh, Walks in Beauty will be touring the U.S. and Europe with an awesome company called Manitoba Company. They are a native-owned business out of Winnipeg, Ontario that makes mucklucks and moccasins, and they are taking her shoes to all the high-end shoe trade shows across the United States in Europe. You can read uh, the full interview and look at some of the pictures of her products and shoes at iicoc.com. On January 2nd, 2010, Trickster Val Gallery will be opening its newest uh, exhibit, A Mare End Continuum, Past, Perseverance and Possibilities, a show featuring Amber Gunn Gauthier, her father Anthony Gauthier, and stepfather Jerry Ingram. Their art ranges from acrylic paintings to wood carvings to traditional regalia. Anthony Tony Gauthier, a painter, muralist, and woodcarver from the Ho-Chunk and Menominee tribes, who, uh, who received an associate uh, degree in fine arts from the Institute of American Indian Arts in Santa Fe, New Mexico, where his daughter Amber now resides. One of uh, his more popular pieces includes a portrait of uh, Chief Joseph and Martin Luther King representing the struggle of two races. Amber grew up on both of her tribe's reservation in Wisconsin, where her career as an artist began at the age of three. Her work depicts the epic struggle of man versus nature versus machine. Jerry Ingram, Choctaw and Cherokee, another award-winning artist, began his career as a painter. Having spent 20 years working in a commercial art, he became a self-taught beater and cool worker, replicating historic beadwork that was created by the Plains and Plateau Indians during the late 1800s. For additional information, you can contact Monica Boutwell Stumbling Bear at the Trickster Gallery Arts uh, or visit myspace.com backslash trickstergallery. 
The Wings of America USA National Cross Country Team has been selected from uh, top placing runners at the Wings National Race held in Albuquerque during December. The regional winners are from the Southern Plains, Northern Plains, and Southwest Divisions, and they competed in, in the national race there. The six male and six female team members will compete against junior cross-country runners in the USA Track and Field National Junior Cross-Country Championships in Spokane, Washington on February 13, 2010. Female winners are Rolanda Jumbo, Charnel Curley, Tamara Lamentino, Marlinda Picos, Felicia, uh, Felicia James, Diane DeBoyce, and alter, alternate uh, Kiana Gachupin. Male winners are Patrick Loras, Troy Madalena, Jonathan Yazzie, Justin Loras, Lucien uh, uh, Coravu, Eric Markham, and alternate Kyle Rockbridge. Assistant Secretary of Indian Affairs Larry Echohawk has announced the schedule for the month of uh, January 2010 for the Interior's Department series of tribal consultation meetings to develop a department-wide tribal consultation policy. The Assistant Secretary noted two changes in the January schedule. The January 5th meeting will be held in Fort Snelling, Minnesota instead of Minneapolis, and the January 14th meeting will be held in Palm Springs, California instead of Sacramento. The January schedule includes the following locations on Tuesday, January 5th, uh, at Fort Snelling, Minnesota, Thursday, January 7th at the Will Rogers World Airport in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, and on Tuesday, January 12th at the Embassy Suites Phoenix in Phoenix, Arizona, and finally on Thursday, January 14th at the Palm Strings Convention Center in Palm Strings, California. The hours of consultation are from uh, 9 o'clock in the morning until 4 o'clock in the afternoon, and we're going to put that URL up for you to get more information at the www.indianaffairs.gov site. The Woodlands Tribal Arts Association, Inc. is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to promote a renaissance of eastern woodland Indian art and crafts. A major tool that the association hopes to use in fulfilling its mission is to deploy and maintain a native interest satellite radio station. Association Chairman Dwayne Prescott, a Ho-Chunk, noted, We believe that there's a large number of artists, traders, dancers, singers, and non-native enthusiasts traveling across the country at any time who would be very interested in Native American programming if it was an option available to them. We hope to convince Sirius XM that a station with cultural, educational, and current event programming would bring them a healthy number of subscribers and listening uh, listeners. Now, the organization is trying to get people to fill out a survey that can be found at www.surveymonkey.com. We're going to put that URL up there in front, too, so you can read that and go to that site if you want to complete that surveyor, uh, survey. excuse me. Board member Ross Davis, uh, the Workforce Development Coordinator for Northwoods Niji Enterprise Community, also noted that mass media is unquestionably a powerful agent of socialization. There's a passion underneath the surface in Indian country anxious to arise, a passion to share stories of culture, history, entertainment, humor, you name it, to communicate across generations, either elder, youth, or even the seven generations. And that can be found at the net for that Woodlands organization at woodlandstribalartist.org. South Dakota is applying for a federal grant to help it build a residential school designed to improve academic achievement amongst American Indian students in that state. A limited number of states will receive money for Race to the Top, a U.S. Department of Education program aimed at encouraging rewarding states that help improve student success. Under South Dakota's proposal, partners would establish a year-round residential school likely in the Black Hills for grades 9 through 12 and two years of post-secondary education. The Obama administration is looking for innovative, outside-the-box ideas that have proven to meet the needs of a state's most underperforming students, said uh, South Dakota State Department of Education Secretary Tom Ostar. And that is the latest roundup of news from Indian Country on this edition of the Native News Update. We want to thank all of you for joining with us and join with us again soon. Miigwech.